two children and undecided as to how you're going to vote in the next election. OK, the things that matter to you, what would you say in this election? Capital services, so social care, mental health services, okay. police. What would you say, Abby? Um, the children's yeah. centre, mainly. What about it? They seem to just be closing all over. Um, and why is that important to you? Because there's not much in Cornwall as it is, and in Penzance there's no, you know, there's no big child play areas that are indoor that you can use all, all year round. There's only a small one, yeah. um, and with the children's centres closing, there's less and less that we can do with our with our kids. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Um, I think there's a lot of um, injustices with uh, a lot of young people at the moment not getting a fair deal, and I think that Brexit is being used as a bit of a mask, a diversion away from actually the real issues that are affecting lots and lots of people. What would you say the real issues are around here? Um, poverty, um, I think unemployment, housing, so there's a lot of uh, problems with people buying houses as well because a lot of the houses are holiday lets and things like that as well which affects a lot of people in Cornwall. Rebecca? Oh, the same with the mental health, though, just isn't enough support for the under-25s where it's needed. OK. Do, I don't know if you heard the Conservatives on Sunday saying they were going to, by 2020, there will be 10,000 more mental health workers within the system. Uh, no new money for that, but there will be 10,000 more. What do you think when you hear a promise like that? That's great, but that's 2020, that's a few years away. We need, we need help now, really, where the young people that need the support. Yeah. What would you say, Julie? Well, I've got family that works in the NHS, so I can definitely see, you know, my dad worked in London in one of these sort of clinics up there, and he could see the cuts and everything getting privatised, and he just, you know, it's just a bit of a shame that you think, what's it going to be like X amount of years down the line? Because I don't really think, you know, with Brexit, we'll see what happens, but I don't think there's much care for the common people of what's going on, really. So, yeah. Um, uh, do you... Do any of you feel a bit forgotten living here when it comes to the way that you're treated by politicians? I don't think you even think about us, really. I think it's, you know, you know, we've got children to look after, we've got, you know, our health to look after, and sort of day-to-day -day living, I think, for a lot of people. If you're on the breadline and you haven't got a lot of money, then it's, yeah, it's quite worrying, really. Mm. So. Do you feel forgotten or not? Um, yes, I think, I think as working-class people, quite often we're forgotten by politics. It's, run by the few, for those few, a lot of the time. Right. And so this is an area with high poverty, so I feel that we're not thought of all the time. What, what would it take for, 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 for people who live geographically in the southwest of the country to be more of a priority, Matt? What would it take? Um, I think there's a lot of infrastructure issues as well with the southwest. It kind of gets ignored if you look at like the, the um, rail networks. Um, also, a lot of the southwest is supported. A lot of projects are funded by the EU, which is going to be a big issue when we leave the EU. Mm. To, um, well, uh, the, I mean, in, in the last 15 years, Cornwall has received something like a billion pounds yeah. worth of EU funding, yeah. which has helped with rail improvements, yeah. actually, and superfast broadband and things like that. The Chancellor, this Conservative Chancellor, Philip Hammond, has said he will continue to fund existing projects up to mm. 2020. Yeah, but that's if he actually says if he does what he says. But, um, yeah, I think um, that's one big issue in, in the South West. There's a lot of reasons why um, people did vote to leave down here outside of that, but there's also going to be a big um, hole in funding, which means that a lot of projects like our, our project, Wild Young Parents, um, are going to be finding it more challenging to find funding, and other charities uh, will as well, and, and they're all going to be competing for the same pools of money. Okay. So. We'll and why do you think it's important that this area has your Wild Young Parents project? Um, we just offer a support network and we can advocate for people um, who are maybe marginalised and don't, don't really have a voice or feel a little bit disenfranchised. I think it's easy for um, politicians to say that they're, they're, they have a strong and stable leadership, but in real terms there's nothing strong and stable about food banks, austerity, poverty, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. And your children have been really, really well behaved. And it wouldn't have mattered if they weren't, to be honest. But thank you so much. Um, Joanna, much more from Campbell. Talking to candidates after 10 o'clock. And uh, we'll ask about the energy price gap, how that's going to work. We'll ask the Conservative candidate uh, who uh, won the election here, the general election in 2015, George Eustace. And we'll talk to Labour and the Greens and UKIP and various other people as well. Join us a little later.
Great, look forward to that. Thank you very much. Now, when someone has an eating disorder, it affects...